There's a river flowing from the throne of God. Drink from the water right now. Oh, there's a river flowing from the throne of God. Drink from the water right now. It's a river of healing. You know, a few weeks ago, I started teaching on uh, faith. I just began the first uh, message about three weeks ago. The Lord dealt with me about getting back to teaching on the fundamentals of faith. Amen. And uh, how many of y'all agree that faith is very, very important for us to, to receive continuous teaching on? Amen. There's many different subjects that we can teach on, that we need to teach on, you know. Um, but I think faith is, is right there at the very top. And the reason why is because the Bible is very clear in Romans uh, and also Hebrews uh, chapter 10 and chapter 11 that the righteous shall live by faith. Amen? And so I concluded one day that if I'm called to live by faith, then I really need to know what faith is because it sounds like to me that my life depends on faith. Yes. Amen? Amen? And so the just or the righteous shall live by faith. And I asked the question here the last time when we were together. It's been like three weeks. I had a gap from the time I started and introduced the subject to you. Then we had a guest speaker, and then we had communion. And uh, so now we're back on again, teaching along these lines. But I asked the question, when do you live? Now. now. Everyone is living now. And uh, we see over here in Hebrews, if you will, turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10 and 11, the end of chapter 10. And... Uh, Verse 35, chapter 10, verse 35, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you've done the will of God, you receive the promise. Say receive. receive. Yeah, that's what faith does. Faith receives. Somebody preached a message one time called the faith that takes. Amen. He said, for yet a little while, verse 37, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. But verse 38, look at this. Now... The just shall live by faith. Now, Paul wasn't saying just, you know, now, listen to me. The just shall live by faith. He's really referring to now because we live now, right? And so, uh, because in verse 37, you see it, he says, For yet a little while he who is coming will come and will not tarry. So he's talking about what is to come. He's talking about something in the future so therefore, then he comes back to the present. He says, but now, right now, you're going to live by faith. Amen? Amen? So then we can agree that faith is a present tense reality. Faith is a now thing. The reason why I have to say that is because we read on here, verse 11, it say, or chapter 11, verse 1, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So right here as we look at this we're starting to understand what faith is. Right? And so when we talk about the fundamentals of faith... There's three things or three parts to it. What faith is, how faith comes, and how to turn your faith loose. Those are three major components to the life of faith. So if he says that the righteous or the just shall live by faith, and if we're, when we live, we live in the now, right? Then we can understand that faith is a present tense reality, or we can say faith is now, or now faith. Do you agree? 
Because he goes on to say, now faith is the substance. Some people say, well, he wasn't really saying like now faith, faith is now. He was just saying now faith. You know, like you're saying somebody's, now, now listen, listen to me. You know, well, when are you listening? I'm having a conversation with you right now. So now listen is a now thing too. All right. So we can say faith is now, now faith is. And that is accurate because we live now. And so if we live now and we're supposed to live by faith, then faith is always now. Right? Praise God. So if we live by faith right now, God called us to live by that all the time. Then we find out that he says faith is the what? Faith is the substance. Of things hoped for. One translation reads it this. Faith is the title deed. So we can conclude that if faith is the title deed, like you pay off your house, and when you pay off your house, you get the title deed that is evidence of ownership. It's proof of ownership. And the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And the Word of God or the Bible is where you find out what you own. Hallelujah. Amen? And God wants you to live in the realm of ownership of everything that Jesus paid the price to give to you. And the only way you're going to know what you own is by looking into your inheritance and reading what the inheritance says. And I'll tell you, when you read what the inheritance says, faith is going to come up in your heart. Woo, that's mine. That's mine. He left that for me. Do you understand? If you have an inheritance and somebody says so-and-so died and left you an inheritance, how quick will you be to get down to that lawyer's office to find out what is in the will? How many of you will go, oh, praise the Lord, man. You're going to jump on that thing in a heartbeat. Is that right? Well, the Bible says Jesus left us an eternal inheritance. That inheritance doesn't start when you get to heaven. That inheritance begins the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You become an heir of God. And it all belongs to you. And the only way you're going to find out what belongs to you so that you can take possession of it so that you can lay claim to it is by finding out what he says in the book. In the will. Say the word word. is the will. will. Do you realize when you open your Bible that you see there that says Old Testament? Huh? You know, and when you read a will, sometimes what they'll say, because sometimes people rewrite their wills. And they'll say the old will, that's null and void now. I've got a new one. Huh? Huh? I know, because I've read them. Anything prior to this moment, this date on this, you know, document is no more. It's new. Here's the will. This is the current will. Well, we have Old Testament. How many of y'all know what a testament is? It's a will. And then we have a what? Are you with? Come on, help me. New? New Testament. New Testament. What's that New Testament? It's the new Testament and will of God. And it's full of better promises, the Bible said. Huh? It's a new covenant, a new testament, a new will. It's got all kinds of new promises. Great promises. We got all the old good promises, and we got all now the new added to it. And it's even better now. Hey. Hey. But you're never going to have any faith concerning those promises if you don't find out what is yours. How can you have confidence to lay claim to something you don't even know that you own? You can't, lay, you can't claim something you don't know is yours. 
You're, are you listening? So the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Or you can say this, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the will of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the will of God. I like the way one person put it one time, that faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Question, can you pray for faith? Lord, give me more faith. No. You know why? Because he's already given it to you. (laughs) You understand? It's a funny thing that how many people are always praying and asking God to do what he already has done. Lord, I ask you to heal me. God, heal me. Please heal me. I don't know why he doesn't heal me. And then they come into a church like this. And then we say, oh, by the way, God is not going to heal you. Well, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. No, no, no. Let me finish. Let me finish. God's not going to heal you. The Bible says God already has healed you by the stripes of Jesus. You are healed, not going to be someday. It's already done. It's a finished, settled work. It's done. I'd never heard that before. Uh Aha, that's why you didn't have faith for your healing because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now you just heard that you're not going to get healed. You already are healed. And so what what are you supposed to do with your faith now that you got it? You say, oh, okay, so what do I do? I'm gonna do what God said. Bible talks about it. It says faith is the substance of things hoped for. In other words, faith gives substance to hope. Hope is just vision. It's desire, but it's just vision and desire. But you got to have something to bring the vision and desire into the realm of reality. And this is what faith does. Faith brings the unrealities of hope into the realm of reality. That's why you need faith. Faith, come on, help me out here. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith gives substance to hope. Faith brings the unrealities of hope into this realm of reality. Hello, come on now. Help me out, somebody. If you don't give an amen, I'm gonna take it from you. Hey, 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 faith, that's what we just read. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen, right? You're anointed, Amen. brother. I just, spit, I just spit on Brother Bob, but, but it was in love, you know? So I, no, now you want to know why the front rows are always empty. <laughs> oh, God bless you. You're a brave man, brother. Hey, I'll come, come preach on this front row right here. Let me anoint these people right here. Look at it again. Now faith is. It says, and what, what, what do we read in verse 38 of chapter 10? It says, now the just or the righteous shall live by faith. And then we see over in Romans 10 and verse 17, it says, faith comes. Listen, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It comes. If you hear the word, you come to church, sit under the word, you're going to get a little dose of faith. And, amen. But don't just live on one meal a week. You're going to be a weak Christian. That's a good one. I didn't even know I made a funny. But you'll be a weak. That's right. You'll be a weak Christian. If all you live on is just what you get right here, I mean, it's going to help you. It may help you a little more than other places. Amen. Not to brag, but anyway, it's just going to help you. But, you, but you, you're not going to be strong if, if all you get is, is, is what, on, on once a week. And not everybody comes every week. Not everybody can come every week. But a lot of times folks can, but they don't. Hello, amen. Now, don't mind, no condemnation here if you want to go to Zephyr Cove and you want to go to Sand Harbor. It's all good, but I want you to know there's still sunshine after 12. (laughs) Shout yes, somebody. That's right, amen. But there's no parking. So what? Walk. (laughs) You pack it in, man. 
Praise the Lord. You can do it. I know, because we have to do it on Sundays. That's right. There's a way. There's a way, man. Hallelujah. So faith, how does it come? Okay, what faith is. Faith is the substance of hope. Or as I said, was it the first, second, or the second service? I don't know. Sometimes I don't remember who I said it to, but you know, I'm preaching the same message twice. All right. So we understand that faith operates on the principle of ownership. That's what it is. Faith, another translation reads, faith is the title deed. The title deed. That means faith takes ownership of what the word of God says belongs to him or her. Amen? Glory to God. Amen. So then there's, uh, no, I'll read a little bit more here. Also, glory to God. Ooh. Right, Brother Bob? Come on, Brother Bob. He's a preacher. So faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good a testimony. Verse 3, let's read verse 3 together. By faith, come on, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen or visible were not made of things that are visible. So I asked you last time, a few weeks ago, what was it that was invisible? That made what was invisible become visible. What was it? Faith. But how was that faith released? By words. words say words. Words. Of faith. God spoke the worlds into existence. And keep in mind that God created man in his own image after his own likeness. And the Bible tells us to be ye imitators of God as dear children. And let me add this to you. The Bible says this, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Amen? Speak life. You can have what you say. Jesus said it. He gave an example concerning faith. And again, when we talk about the fundamentals of faith and being grounded in the fundamentals of faith, because your life depends on it, we need to understand what faith is. Come on. Say it. What faith is. How faith comes. And how to turn your faith loose. See, a lot of people that have faith. I know this person. They had lots of faith and they died. All right. Well, good. I mean, not good, really. I mean, I, I'm messing up my illustration here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That, well, it's, it's good if they went to heaven. Yes, thank you, brother. You're helping me, man. Hello. I know this person, they died, but they had lots of faith. Well, that's just like saying, I know this person, and they died of starvation, and they had lots of money. Did you actually, do you know that there actually are people? There's, there's newspaper articles over the years where they found somebody dead in a hotel room of mal- complications that came from malnourishment. And they found this guy, he was a hoarder. And he had all these boxes. And they went through a few boxes and they found, uh, they had accumulated up to $14,000. Now I wonder what's in the rest of it. Another $5,000, $10,000, another $40,000. The man had all kinds of cash and he died while he had all this money. Well, I want you to use that as an example. I know this person And they had lots of faith, and they died. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? It's like this. You can go to a store, and you can have a pocket full of money. You can go to a restaurant. You can go anywhere where there's plenty of food, and you can have a pocket full of money and starve to death with the whole grocery store full of groceries. 
Because unless you learn how to take the money out of your wallet and get your food and bring your food and take the money and release the money for the food, you're going to die with all that money. There's a lot of people that die with all kinds of, quote, faith. Here's what they have faith in. I'll tell you what they have faith in. They have faith in the ability of God to heal. But what they don't have faith, because they haven't found out in the Word, is God's willingness to heal. Well, God is able. God is able. Oh, no, it's more than that. God is more than able. He is willing. Just like the leper that came to Jesus that day. He said, Lord, if you are willing, if you are, he didn't even ask about his ability. He knew he could do it. He had the ability to do it. But he said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus said, I will be cleansed in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, he didn't say in Jesus' name, but we say in Jesus' name. Right? <laughs> Jesus saying, Jesus, oh, in me name, in me name. No, it doesn't quite work, does it? Hello? And you say, yeah, but that was one incident. Well, that's enough for me because I'll tell you what. Jesus made the statement. He said, I did not come to do my Father's will. I came to, I said, wait, 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 retract. Brrrp. No, he said, I came not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. And so we can understand that the life and ministry of Jesus was a manifestation of the will of God in action. Jesus came to establish the will of God. So when that man said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus said, I never do anything. I don't say anything unless I hear the Father say it. He says, what I say is the Father speaking. What I do is the Father working. So Jesus said, I came to establish the will of the Father in the earth. And so when Jesus said, I am willing, the Father said, I am willing. And he's still willing today. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So people have great faith in God's ability, but they haven't found out enough in the Word to give them faith in His willingness to do it. I want you to know it's God's will for you to be healed. It's God's will for you to prosper. It's God's will for you to walk in victory. It's God's will for you to be above and not beneath. The head and not the tail. That's God's will for you. Hello! It's not God's will for you to live a defeated life. Oh, I'm going to take a breath here. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm looking at the clock, but it goes to the temperature, and then the clock, and then the temperature, and then the clock. And sometimes you mix it up. Oh, I still, I still got an hour and a half to preach. Hey! Say hey! hey. Come on now. So he said, the righteous shall live by faith. Paul made the statements really great. It's over there in uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 8, 9, and 10. Let's put that up there. Romans 10, verses 8, 9, and 10. What saith it? Well, that's King James. What saith? But this is New King James, all right. It's okay. What does it say? Help me out here. Come on, let's read it together. It's a quote. They're quoting an Old Testament passage. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Let's keep on going. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Let's read it. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says, for by grace you are saved through faith and not of works, 
lest any man should boast. The way you came into the life of faith was by faith to begin with. You heard the gospel about Jesus Christ being Lord and Savior, that you needed to believe on him and confess him as Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead. You heard that message and faith came to your heart. And then when the invitation came for you to receive Jesus Christ, you acted on that faith and you confessed him as your Lord and Savior. Did you know that's the beginning of your life of faith? And everything from here on out, all the promises of God are in him, yes, and in him, amen. So you need to find out what a, what's in the rest of your salvation. You got salvation. In other words, you got fire insurance. You're going to heaven, but there's more to your salvation than heaven. He wants you to live it and walk it out in victory in this life. And you're only going to find out by getting into the book. Hello. Hey. Hey. Do you have to shout? Well, Jesus told me, he, go, he said, go preach and teach and demonstrate faith is what he told me. Did you hear that? He said, preach and teach. So right now I'm preaching. I don't yell when I teach or shout. But there's just something about the preaching anointing that, whoa, come on now, praise God. Hallelujah. Hey. It's like going on a really great ride at an amusement park. Wow. I'm on that ride right now. Come on now. I want to take you on that ride with me. Are you on it with me? Hey, praise God. The same kind of faith that brought you to Jesus and got you born again works on the same principle. You hear the word, faith comes to your heart, and then you confess and speak that word. What did you do when you got saved? You confessed the word of God. You confessed what the Bible said about Jesus. God heard your confession and he answered. And you got saved. Say it, saved. Saved. Come on. Or or maybe right here. (laughs) Hey, come on. I'm saved. How did I get saved? How did you get saved? Somebody spoke words to you. And those words produce faith. Put it up there, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Let's say it together. You got to look at it. You know, sometimes you got to look at it. I'm saying it, but you got to look at it. Let's read it. Come on. One, two, three. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yahoo. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of God. Do you know, think about it. You need to eat. If you want to be strong and do things physically, you need to be nourished. You need to eat so you can have strength. You can be strong. You can have energy to function in this life. How many of y'all know that? Come on now. If you don't know that, then what planet are you from? Everybody knows if you don't eat, that over time you'll become weak and you won't be able to do what other people are able to do. That Listen, you won't be able to do what other people are doing that are eating. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In that word, word, we're going to keep. Thank you for putting that up there, by the way. The word, word, in the Greek is the word rhema. Say rhema. And beside the river. Thank you for watching Demonstrations of Faith, a ministry outreach of Faith Alive Christian Center in Reno, Nevada. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come and connect with us. We have ministry for the entire family on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Our Connect Youth Ministry meets on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Child care is available for all services. Our location is 120 Hubbard Way, half block east of the Pepper Mill in Reno. You can find us online at faithalive.net or by searching for Faith Alive at all social media outlets. 
Thanks for watching and join us next week for Demonstrations of Faith. And it's flowing to